that day shall be upon thee for a sign. What is the day? The curses. The curses are going to be upon you for a sign, meaning you're going to be able to look in the world and know that those are the people of God based on the curses that he said will happen to that people. Now, what other people did that can you identi can identify with these curses? Nobody. Name another people. Nobody, right? You don't know no other people that that happened to. We are identifying who we are according to the Bible. We are, we're identifying why we're in the condition that we're in right now. And guess what? This book has been on our shelf all our life and we just did not know. Right. Because we didn't have nobody who understood it that could teach it to us. Right. It says our sons and daughters will be given to another people. That's this right here. Our sons and daughters being sold off in slavery. And I'm going to show you the rest of it. Give me... Read on. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Imagine this being you and your children being taken away from you. You see how she holding on to her baby? Imagine that being you and your child being ripped away from you and you, there's nothing you can do about it. it God, God said what? Read that part again. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. God says you're going to see your children being taken away from you and you're gonna, your eyes are going to fail all the day long come on and there should be no might in thine hand and there ain't gonna be no power in your hand to get your children back that's what happened to us we were ripped from our mothers and fathers and sold to a nation that does not give a damn about us right and now we're still here today in america right things are not okay my sister things are not right we have to make things right by understanding what has happened to us and then follow the instruction that was given to us read on Give me verse 45. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. So the Bible is talking to the children of Israel. It wasn't talking to nobody else. He said that if we don't listen, all these curses are going to come upon us, overtake us, and pursue us. Read. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Because we didn't hearken to God. That's how we got into America today. I'm going to show you something. Read on. To keep his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes which he commanded thee. Come on. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. Now God says that So the curse only fits us. That means that we're the children of God. Right. Read on. And for a wonder. And for a wonder because our people wonder what their nationality is. If you ask a brother or sister, what's your nationality? They're going to say black or they're going to say African American. No, you're not. You're the Israelite of the children of Israel. Right. They were taken right. away from us. Right. They've taken our, our heritage, claimed themselves as the, as the Israelites. They don't even say we're the Israelites. They say we're Israeli. Right. They don't say that. I'm a Jew. They say, I'm Jewish. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Meaning, I'm kind of like a Jew, but I'm not really a Jew. You see what I'm saying? They are talking our nationality. Now they wonder why they're catching hell over there in our land. Because that land belongs to us. You understand that? Right. We had to flee from the land because of Roman persecution in 70 AD. When Titus and Vespasian ransacked our homeland, killed millions of blacks in the land of Israel, and we fled into the inner parts of Africa. Right. That's why we were abducted from the coast of Africa and then brought here to America. This history ain't taught in school. It ain't taught in church. We have lost the knowledge of ourselves, and we are bringing back the knowledge to our people today. Right. Because we're in the time period where war is going to break out amongst all these nations. But those that understand who they are, and how to keep God's commandments, we're going to be saved. What? We're right. going to be saved. That rapture that they be talking about in the Christian church, that ain't for everybody. That rapture is for God's people who were put in slavery, right. who were stripped of their God, stripped of their land. That ain't for everybody that picked the Bible up and started reading and say, I believe in Jesus. No, 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 no. Right. That's why when you get the Revelations, the last book of the Bible, the only names on the kingdom of heaven is who? Bring it out. The children of Israel. Right. What's your nationality? 
There's no such thing. What's your father? Is he black, Hispanic, or Native Indian, or neither? Your father is African American? Oh, gotta be specific. See, that's the thing. I'm gonna show you something. Numbers, chop. Give me that in numbers. This is what the Bible. This is how we identify who we are. The Bible specifically says you are what your father is. Watch this. Read what you got. Numbers chapter one, verse eighteen. Read it out. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. So they grabbed all the congregation of Israel and brought them together on the first day of the second month. Read. And they declare their pedigree. What's a pedigree? What you're made of, your bloodline. They declare their pedigrees after their family. After their family. By the house of their fathers. By the house of their mother. Their fathers. By multicultural. Their fathers. Your father determines what you are. Right. Not your mother. He, he, he can't be multi-anything. He is what his father is. Is your father known as a so-called black man? Is his father known as a so-called black man? Then guess what, sister? You are from the tribe of Judah. Yes. That is who you are. So when it comes to you, you got to know what your father is. If he filled out an application, what would he put on there? Hey, but three things you can choose from, black, white, or other. What would he put on there? I would say uh, my assessment is probably other. Oh, well, what about you? This is an easy question. If you had to go fill out an application, not even you, if your father went and filled out an application for a job and, it, and said, what's your race, what would he put on there? Whatever is chosen. Black, other, African American, okay. white, non-Hispanic. No, you right? gotta you you can't pick all of them. There's others. You're gonna pick one. Right. It's the you have it's it's uh optional. Right. right? It's it's multiple it's a multiple uh answers on there or questions on there. You can only choose one. Yeah. Which one would he choose? My dad? I yeah. know you gotta ask. Can I ask a question? Yes. So what if the dad is a mixed uh, breed? Like, he can't be mixed. mixed. He you know what I'm saying? They say his mom was... Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what the mother is. Because listen, the you. woman, all she does is carry the seed. You see that? She carries the baby. The father does what? He fertilizes that egg. It is what the father is. If I took an apple seed, right, from here in America, if I took an apple seed and I planted it in that dirt right there, what's it going to produce? Apples, right? If I take that same seed, once that tree uh, bears fruit, I take seed from that tree. If I take that, that seed to China and plant it in the ground, what's it going to produce? Apples, because it is what its father is. The seed that it comes from, that's what it is. Right. So there's no, there's, no, there's no gene or sperm cell that's multicultural. Right? That, that don't exist. The sperm cell is what that man is. You see what I'm saying? So when he plant that seed in that woman, that child is going to be what the father is. So if the child is a black man, guess what? If the father is a black man, the child is a black man. If the father is the seed of the white man, guess what that child is? The white man. It's not multicultural. There's no such thing as multicultural. Read it again. Numbers chapter 1 verse 18. And they assemble all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their father. Why? Because now, once you have, you got, do you own lands? Yeah. All right, so do you have children? No. All right, you got lands. Let's say you had a son. You got land, right? Let's say you got a daughter. And you got land, but you old. You know what I'm saying? Do you want your daughter to marry within your nation or outside of your nation? Within my nation. Within your nation. Because if she married outside of the nation, her husband, who is her head, give me that in 1 Corinthians. Her husband, who is her head, if he's outside the nation, guess who takes ownership of your land? Yeah. He owns your land now. That's why we have to come back to what God says. That's why we got to come back to the Bible. The, the, the answer to fix our community is in the scriptures. It's just that you have to understand the way it's written. It's not written so that everybody can pick this up and start reading. I got a question. You ever try to read the Bible? Fall asleep? Huh? Ask a question. Well, for real, for instance, when you started reading the Bible, did you get sleepy? A little bit, then Bring you just up. closed it, right? Because it's not it's it's not meant for everybody to understand. You can get, hold that. Give me uh give me uh what I want. I want Psalms chapter 110, 111 and 10. Yeah, get that from me real quick. I'm gonna show you why. Because everybody can't open this book and get understanding. It's not this is a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual book. 
if you're not spiritual, according to the way that God tells you to be spiritual, then you can't get the understanding. Watch this. Psalms chapter 111, verse 10. Read out. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So, the beginning of wisdom, if you want to start to begin to get wisdom, you got to do what? Read it. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You got to first start to fear God, meaning fear the judgment of breaking the commandments. Fear the judgments of not following what he says to do. That's the fear. Not, not, not there's a God that you got to you walk around like he's about to punch you in the back of the head. That ain't the fear that it's talking about. It's talking about you fear when you, when you go outside of the marital laws and have sex with another woman, you fear you're going to get a disease because that's what's written in the scriptures. You fear that you're going to be put to death if you kill someone. You should fear death because now you don't put somebody to death. You should fear breaking God's commands because now you're going to be put to death. Read it again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom uh -huh. a good understanding you want to get a good understanding have all day that do his commandment when you start doing the commandments that's when you can open the bible and you can start reading it without going <sighs> you be looking at the pages it look like the words just be jumping at you and going back in like this right here you like damn what the hell you got the devil on you that's what that's what it is what? i'm being for real the devil on you now what i had you hold it yeah read that First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 Read out. But I will have you know That the head of every man Is Christ Who's the head of every man? Christ, head of every man, pay attention here The head of every man is Christ And the head of the woman is the man Who's the head of the woman? It ain't 50-50 The Bible don't say 50-50 do it But you go out there and you ask some of them sisters Hey, in a relationship, is the relationship 50-50 or is the, is the man 100% over the woman? They all going to say it's 50-50. Right. Mm. Uh, if he do it, I can do it. I, 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 we got to agree. We got to sit down and we got to discuss this. Now, if he says this, guess what? That's what it is. That's your husband. If he is the ruler, if he wear the pants like he's supposed to, if he's a man of God that fears God and keeps the commandments, you should follow that man. It should be exactly what he say because he's doing according to what God said. Right. Right. So, Read that again, that part. And the head of the woman is the man. Uh -huh. And the head of Christ is God. So even Christ got a head, which is his father. Come on. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. So if you got your head covered when you're praying or in the midst of prophecy, come on. Dishonoreth his head. He dishonored his head. Who's the head of man? Christ. Who's the head of man? Christ. Christ is the head of man. Read that part again. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. Meaning, sis, when you go pray, when you go send up prayers or you read the scriptures, the first thing you got to do when you open the Bible is cover your head. Because that shows reverence to the Father. That shows reverence to Christ. Are you married? You're not married. So you ain't got no Lord. There's no man over you. Christ is your head. So when you cover your head, you honor Christ, right? That's step one. You want to start to get understanding first? Fear God. And when you fear God, you will cover your head and then go with the scriptures. Like you, you when the scriptures coming out, you should uncover your head because the scriptures is coming out. If you go in the courtroom, you can have the smallest charge ever. You got a misdemeanor. And you go in that courtroom and that white man sit on there. When they say, you may be seated, you going to have... You gonna have your hat on? What the first thing you do when you go walk in the, walk in the courtroom? In the white man courtroom, let's say it like that. When you walk in the white man courtroom with your misdemeanor that you know you ain't going to jail for, what's the first thing you do? If you got a hat on, what's the first thing you do? Be honest, bro. You can, what you do? You gonna take that damn hat off? Cause if not, he gonna say, uh, brother, take your hat off in the courtroom while I'm gonna hold you in contempt of court. Right. That's the same thing God is saying. But God's punishment was much worse. Look at what he did to his chosen people. He ain't hold you in contempt of court in a little bar. He put you in shackles and chains and had you drugged from one part of the earth to the next part of the earth. That's the punishment of God. That's why the Bible said in Psalms, the beginning of wisdom is to fear God. We got, this is what we, this is what's missing in our community. This is what we're lacking. So when we're dealing with the kingdom of heaven, how we lost our ability and access to the, to the rights to the tree of life is due to breaking God's commandments. 
We broke the commandments. Now here we are in America today. What's your nationality? Black. Right. African American. That ain't nationality, bro. Nationality is about bloodline. It's about what nation of people do you come from? I perceive you got a question. No, you just listening. Well, all praise to the most high. What's your nationality? I'm from the Levitical priesthood. You from the oh you you's a Levite. You a Levite. All praise to the most high. You understand that the day is the Sabbath day? I understand all. You understand all? Okay. Give me <laughs> He gonna go crazy. Give me yeah, read that. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Now the devil gonna come out. Or oh, this brother. So y'all just be patient. You know him? You don't know him? Oh, all right. Three. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. Through some of their generations. Throughout their generations. You know, you know, did you know the law on fringes? Why are you on one? I grew up. Okay, but I, I, that didn't answer the question though. Why you don't wear fringes? What changed? Find out. Give me uh, Malachi. Uh, did Malachi change not? Yeah. So what? Yeah, that's what it says. <clears throat> yeah, not that you can't get your own understanding. Right. You can't. You can't get your own understanding. Give me Proverbs three and five. Bring it out. Give me Proverbs chapter three verse five. Bring it out. Real quick. Read. Proverbs chapter three verse five. Bring it out. Trust in the Lord. Trust in yourself. Trust in the Lord. What you're gonna learn is that we do this 24/7, 365 days a year. That's this right. is our job. We right. go, we right. go back and forth to this thing. Right. Trust in yourself, God said. Trust in the Lord. Read on. With all thine heart. With some of your heart. With all thine heart. Read. And lean not unto thine own understanding. You just said get your own understanding. The Bible said what? And lean not. No, lean to it. And lean not. Until thine own understanding. God says, don't lean until your own understanding. Because our own understanding got us out here today doing this. Right. right. Look at our own understanding. Our own understanding says we can break the Lord's Sabbath day. Yeah. That's why God said, don't lean until your own understanding. Lean until the understanding that I'm giving you. Give me what I had you over? Uh Malachi. That's Malachi, right? Read that. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. Bring it out. For I am the Lord. I change not. No, over time things change. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob. We are the sons of Jacob. He says, I change not, you sons of Jacob. What I said from the beginning is just as in the end. Right. Always. Yes, always. It was the, the, the Sabbath was then, Sabbath is now. Right. He said, but put fringes throughout. We go back to go that go, go back to that. If he said he changed not. This proves that he says, I change not. Read it again. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Bring it out. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation. And the fifth generation stopped. Throughout their generation. Are we still generating today? Yes, we're still producing children. Over and over, we were, if we were, if we had stopped generating, we wouldn't be here right now. Right. Bring he it says, out. throughout your generations, Put fringes on your garments because what? if I didn't know you from a damn anybody else in the world, but if I saw that brother coming down the street, I'm like, he got no fringes. Hey, Shalom, bro. I know I, I, I know what time it is with you based on your dress code right. because God gave us the dress code. But let's also find out what the fringes are for. Read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders. A ribbon of blue. So on the garment, there should be fringes with a ribbon of blue on it. On your dress too, sister. Let's put, put your dress on. You put it around the garment. Read. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, uh -huh. that you may look upon it. So you're supposed to look upon the fringe. And remember all the commandments of the Lord. The, the fringes are here to remind you to keep the commandments of God. Right. Now, look at these Indians right here, so-called Indians. Come here, sister. Sister, let me tell you something. He does this every week. Pay him no attention. Look at this right here. You see this right here? You notice that the, these Indians, he's, he's, he's reading four corners, right? He's reading, you want to teach somebody? Go on over there, bro. Look at all the people over there you can go teach. Why you always come to our because teaching place? You see this right here? Why? So if, if, if I'm telling lies, how did these Indians know to do this? Because they obviously they was here before us, right? 
How did how do they know to do this? Sister? Look at this. How did how they know to do this? You see that? Because they are from they are from the nation of Israel. When they came here to this side of the world, they came to keep the commandments that they were not keeping when we was in our homeland. Right. So how in the world do these so-called Indians know to come and put fringes around their whole garment, but why didn't you put them on the four corners? Because the Bible did not say that, all right? This is a law that we must keep in order to understand that we need to keep the commandments of God. Now, you may say things have changed, I get it. A lot has happened where we have forgotten and the customs was not passed down because growing up, I ain't know nothing about no fringe. Right. I would be I, I would look at it like it was funny too. But when the spirit of God is dealing with you, when the spirit of God is on you and you desire to do the will of God, give me that. When you desire to do the will of God, you're gonna do what the Bible say. You ain't gonna make excuse. Time is short, brothers and sisters. Time is short. We are in the very last days. You think we got time to be playing? Bring it out. The war going on in Israel with uh, uh with, with Gaza, that is not a game. What? That is Help. biblical prophecy happening in your face. Right. Read what you got. Psalm chapter 40, verse 8. Bring it out. I delight to do thy will. Oh my God. The will of God was for us to come and keep the commandments. Right. But did we keep the commandments? No. That's why we had to go in slavery. Right. Read. Yea, thy law is within my heart. It says the law is within your mind. So when you start doing, Fine. yeah, not this hard though. What did he say? Read it again. Thy law is within my heart. What is the heart, brother? Bring it out. What is the heart? Let me ask you a question. You see how you want to go up and answer that? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. What's the, what's the heart? Go Let's see what the Bible says. What is the heart? Is it, when it says thy law is in my heart, is it talking about this? What is it talking about? What what heart is it talking about? The commandments, the law. Okay, it's in my this was David. Yes. Where was David's heart that he was talking about? It was in the Lord. It wasn't in his heart as a man. Alright, let's see. Give me that in uh yeah, read this. Let's see what the heart is. We gotta go through this every week. Let's see what the Bible says the heart is. This is how you get an understanding. Read. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. Bring it out. For from within. From without. For from within. For from within. Out of the heart of men, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Where do thoughts come from, brother, right here? Where, you, where does your thoughts come from? Your what? Your mind. You see, you see how simple that is? Thoughts come from your mind. Can this, can this vessel that pumps blood, does it have thoughts? Bring it out. It don't got thoughts. The Bible is written in parables, similes, allegories. Be okay then. So when it says heart, it's not meaning a literal heart. It's talking about your mind. Read it again. For from within, from within, out of the heart of men, out of the mind of men, proceed evil thoughts. Let's see what some of these evil thoughts are to see if it comes from this vessel that pumps blood or from this mind that has thoughts. Read on. Adultery. Does adultery start in this vessel that pumps blood? When a man wants to step out on his wife to go sleep with another woman, does he? Does that start in here? That starts right here. You know why? Because they start flirting. They start talking to each other on the job. Next thing you know, he in her bed or she in his bed. He commits adultery. That started within the mind. Read. Fornication. Fornication. When you step outside of the laws of marriage and you go and have sex, you have fornicated. That starts in your mind. Like when you meet a sister and you don't marry her, you're like, you know what? Sis, let's go on a date. Y'all go on a date. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get to drinking. Next thing you know, you're like, shoot, it's late. You might as well just get a hotel room. You get a hotel room, you then you know what's going down next. You're having sex. That is called fornication. Did that start in this heart? Or did it start right here, brother? Bring it out. It started in your mind. Read. Murderers. Murderers. Now, a murderer. Does he have a feeling in his heart when he wants to, that he's about to kill somebody? No. It's conceived in his mind before he is premeditated. Why do you think they call it premeditated? Right, bring it out. There's, yeah. Premeditated means you got to use your mind to think about it before you do it. Right. That's premeditated murder. Read. Right. Deaths. Deaths. And now, we all done stole before. I know I did. I was a big thief when I was young. I was like, what? Could put that around me. I take it. Now, did that thought start in my mind or in my, in my, in my chest? Bring it out. Thief, that thievery starts in the mind. You start, you see it, you see it, and you're like, oh, damn. I gotta have that right there, boy. 
Figure out me a way to get it. Let me go. Let me see if they, when they leave, I'm gonna run over them. Man. That starts right there. Come on. Covetousness, uh -huh. wickedness, uh -huh. deceit, uh -huh. lasciviousness, uh -huh. and evil eye, uh -huh. blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within. Come from without. Within. Uh -huh. And defile the man. They come from within the mind of man, and then they defile the man because he commits the actual act. Right. right. That's when you have defiled. The, the man is defiled. When he thinks about stealing, then he goes steal. Right. Then he's committed sin. You see what I'm saying? All of these are basic steps that are going to help put us back in position for the kingdom of heaven. Right. Because we say we want it, but we don't want to do what it takes to get it. Right. That don't make no sense. How you want the kingdom of heaven, but you don't want to put in the work required to get it? Right. The work means that, give me that in Exodus chapter 18 and verse 20. Yeah. Exodus chapter 18 and verse 20. What is the work of God? Read. Exodus chapter 18 verse 20. And thou shalt teach them Ordinances. We got to teach our people the ordinances of God. And laws. The laws of God. And shall show them the way wherein they must walk. This is the way in which you must walk, brothers and sisters. This right here is the way. You want to get the kingdom of heaven, then you must start to walk in the commandments of God. Because when you don't, you are walking a contrary to God. You go, you're not going to get the kingdom of heaven, bro. You are right. going to fail on this journey. You are going to fall into the hands of Satan, and then all, all, all hope is lost. Right. All hope is done. These are the last days. We right. must learn to repent and keep God's commandments. Go back to that in 1 Kings. Go back to that in 1 Kings. I hope you learned something. Learn that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Right. That you must keep God's commandments. Read. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 46. Bring it on. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, uh -huh. and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. We have now been carried away captive here in America, far away from our homeland. So far away and destroyed so much as a people, when we ask you, what is your nationality? You say black. What? You are not black. Right. Black is a color in a crayon box. Right. There's no such thing as a black man. Right. You're an Israelite man. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.